Hello everyone! So today I'm going to be doing another installment of my NCIS LA reviews! Woo! Today I'm going to be doing episodes 2 through 6, which is uh, blah, 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 blah. not important right now. I'm going to try and make these reviews about 3 minutes each, so we'll see how that turns out because one episode is usually about 15 minutes. So we'll see if I end up with like an hour and a half of footage. Obviously something went wrong. That, let's begin! Season 1, Episode 2, The Only Easy Day. So we start out meeting the world's purest cocaine company. What, what? Shootouts, death, you know the drill. Bring me in, theme song. Speaking of which, this is also the first episode with a theme song. I don't know if it's the same theme song they still use now. It doesn't have anyone's name in it or anything. I mean, it's nice, but it's not, like, epic. You, you know what I mean. The show does excel in humor, though. And we see Sam bringing up seals. I wonder if that's gonna be a thing. So they're speculating about the gang, and they're wondering if maybe they met up at, like, a grocery store, because that is the typical gang hangout spot. So there's, like, a human trafficking subplot, and Kenzie hides a gun in her thong, and... Dom always looks like he's about to puke. He looks so nervous. This poor guy. Aww. We see more of Kenzie and her destroying of automobiles. My favorite. Oh. Oh. These poor people in their poor cars, though. But I have to admit, I would be a little honored, actually. Like, I'd come out really angry and really sad seeing my key card, but then I'd be like, Kenzie did it? Oh, just, just, thank you, Kenzie. This episode, you know what, just to speed this along, I'm gonna just list some key points. Hetty's sassy. Kenzie has a small bladder. Sam says, for the love of Gucci. Okay. There's someone named, like, Colgate or Colgate or some other brand of toothpaste. Yeah, that's all you really need to know about the second episode. Season 1, episode 2. So, um, so why did I do the first episode all by itself? Season 1, episode 3, Predator. They're, it's like Marines, and I they're saying Hawkeye, but I keep thinking they're saying Hot Guy. Like, Agent Hot Guy, do you read me? And then he'll be like, yes, I read you loud and clear. But that never happened. What on earth was up with LL Cool J's shirt in the beginning of this episode? That, I mean, that had to be some kind of, like, joke shirt. Like, has anyone ever brought this up to him before? Like, was this... What happened? Alright, that's- I don't even remember what happened the rest of the episode, that's all I can think about. Hetty! Hetty and Frank Sinatra, I think, had a thing. That's really exciting, actually. Now, originally I was gonna make, like, a joke and censor every time that they say seal in this episode, but then I realized that the entire episode would sound like- Callan! <laughs> we solved the case! Also, haha, <sighs> Sam's ears may or may not wiggle. I never understood that. Can people's ears, like, wiggle? Do my ears just have as much talent as the rest of my body? Which is none. Kenzie goes undercover as this really intelligent hacking woman, and haha, <laughs> everyone's talking about her bra size, and she, like, fires that line right off back at them, and that's, ooh, Dom and this woman at the bar have like this weird romantic tension that I'd rather not talk about. Would much rather just skip to where there's a bleeding dead boy in the bathroom. Then the boy is not the head of it. There's another guy, the head of this thing, named Hazmi Khan. Hazmi Khan has a wife named Rivka. 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 Rivka's dead. Because Rivkas don't do well in this universe, apparently. And it's the most obvious guy who we thought it was all along. Yay, next episode. Season 1, episode 4, Search and Destroy. There's a super sketchy guy running through the airport. And I don't, I'm not literally, I'm, he's the sketchiest man I've ever seen. Like, And then Kenzie got laid, apparently. That has nothing to do with anything else in the story, but go Kenzie. So we find out the criminal is crazy and he's talented. For those of you who are not aware, that's a lethal combination. So the guy's brother owns a gun shop, and then Dom and 
someone else we can't remember. They go in and, hey, Dom finds another dead body. This kid's on a roll. Oh, Kenzie, I love Kenzie, just like she loves anyone that wore pants. I actually had to look up, do swans have tails? Because when they're making the little, when Sam and Callan are making the little origami swans, like, they're really nice. That takes a lot of talent. Like, they could have had a career out of just making little swans. But pff, I decided to work in the law enforcement. Um, so then Callan pretends to be a video game nerd and he doesn't know anything, so he just blackmails the guy, which is. I guess that's the way to get to do things. Who knew? Then, alright, I'm. Ugh, you guys know that I really am trying not to compare NCIS and NCISLA because I believe that every show is its individual, that would be my, like. It's like me uh, going and saying, like, JAG, NCIS, like, it's not. But, um, there is this one scene, and I can't remember which came first, but this, there's a scene in NCIS where this father is talking to Gibbs, and, like, Gibbs has the son, and the son believes the father's innocent, and the father turns out to be innocent. He's, like, in the woods, and the guy tries to shoot him, and he's wearing a vest. You guys know the episode I'm talking about, hopefully, if you watch the show. That scene where Callan is talking to the girls, boyfriend, the sketchy guy from the airport, that reminded me so much. That was such a parallel and like they're not similar in the relationships, but I think it was similar in the situation and I just, that drew my attention and I kind of liked it because I'm a sucker for parallels. And Callan's such a sweetie. Oh, he like has like this rock hard shell. He's such a sweetheart. And he like tells the girl, they like, oh my god. Callan's such a sweetheart. I love him. I didn't think I would like him, but I do. I like him a dangerous amount. Ha ha ha! Then they hunt the actual guy down, and they put the big video on him. Like, the big video screen. That is of him, and it's so awkward, and I, ooh. Anyone around there, I feel like, like you were just smothered with awkward tension. The episode ends with this, like, discontently content kind of note with Callan. And Hetty uses a stepladder, and she's, oh, she's such, like, a proud mom with all the kids on the team, and they're so cute. <sighs> okay, I'm done. Kill Shot, season one, episode five. So this couple on the water is really happy, and apparently everyone else is just really happy for them as well. And they're also jerks, because they knock someone off their surfboard, and then they're just like, ha 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 ha. And then this, like, dead man crashes, and then... He is not breathing. He has been shot. Good for you. Do you work in the detective business? And Dom. Dom's like the little brother of the entire group. And I think he's so cute. And I, I don't know. Like, I connect with him a lot because I feel like we'd be awkward in the exact same ways. Like, we wouldn't be, know what to do. And we'd be really scared. I don't know. I, I connect with him. So basically, the guy on the jet ski was a creature of habit, so someone learned his schedule, and he was shot, and that's, that's his story. So Sam and Callan go into his house, and there's bloody walls, and bloody lamp, and a bloody, oh. Hmm. That's some bloody person, huh? So then Sam and Callan are talking about various places where Callan could live, and then they're talking about, like, you know, RVs versus boats, but hold the boat. We've got a case to talk about. Sam is suspiciously good at learning this criminal activity. A little too good. And then the man who shot the other guy isn't a man at all, it's an Asian woman. Just kidding, it's Vance. Turns out this woman's an assassin, and Vance and Hetty are really cute together. Oh, I like their chemistry. Abby! Abby's here! Or at least I thought it was Abby, until she started calling him Leon. What has Abby ever called him Leon? And where is she? Like, <laughs> did someone like kidnap her? And then she's like, that was a joke, Leon. I don't even remember what the joke was. All I can remember is that she was calling him Leon. And it wasn't even once where I could skip over it. It was literally like, Leon. Hey, Leon. How are you, Leon? I'm good, Leon. Then Callan has a deep-rooted fear of bureaucrats. 
And please refer to the Futurama song about bureaucrats to see what all I- that's all I could think about this whole time. And then they send Dom undercover! Don't die yet, you're too naive. The writers haven't done enough to you yet. He's so pure. How is this woman still alive? She lost, like, enough blood to kill three other people, but... She can't die yet. She still has to be in an episode of NCIS. Then Jackie Vance can kill her. Then she's okay. And also, the wife is the murderer. Always suspect the wife. And they lost Teddy's camera button. Dramatic ending to a dramatic episode. And then finally we have Keeping It Real, Season 1, Episode 6. Keeping It Real. Oh, we start out with some rap music. You know I love it when an NCIS episode starts out with rap music. We're at a happening party. Sadly, I was not invited, but what else is new? Then the guy falls off the roof. That escalated quickly. Should I say de-escalated quickly? No, I shouldn't, because that's not a word. And then everyone's like, so did, you, did you hear that? The body falling? No, okay, let's, let's the, turn up the rap music, everyone. <laughs> I think someone just died. Sam tells us that seals learn to be seals. He just, he couldn't. He needed to say seals. He's been choking on it these past episodes. He just, he needs, the man could have died. He just, he needed to say it. Hetty was a party girl, yay! Hetty, born, hatched, or possibly sculpted from clay, I don't know. You know the guy has the moolah, yeah. Then Sam and Callum go to this sergeant, and he's so awful. He can't stop making comments about how stupid these guys were. Like, we get it. They were dumb, but they're dead now. Like, they might have been dumb, but you're just a jerk. Turns out the guy had fake money. Hey, that's illegal. Then Agent Giordano, who's investigating the money fraud, comes into the picture, and what she wants isn't on the room service menu. Hey, hey, hey. Because she wants a man. Then Callan, I don't know if he was telling the truth or not. I just, I think he was telling the truth. I don't know. I have faith in him. Uh, that his foster brother got killed. That's really awful and really sad. Oh, my baby Callan. Kenzie and Callan are my babies. I just feel the need to tell you that right now. Agent Giordano literally just keeps talking like she's trying to seduce him, like... Wanna join me for a cheeseburger? Agent Giordano, are you trying to seduce me? I think Kenzie is the favorite child at this agency, just saying. Kenzie is gorgeous, intelligent, and a bamf with a side of wit, and that's all I aspire to be in life. So, god, I love this woman. And then we get a line about Canadian stereotypes. But I guess we're just ignoring that. Callan goes undercover as an awkward paper person, and... Ooh, I like it a lot. I love the role that Kenzie played, and I love the role that he played, and I hope I get to see more roles like that in the future. I'm digging it. Just when you think Eric can't get any more attractive, turns out he's minored in lit. Ugh. Oh. Moving on. But hey, Rick took the bait. Nice job, Rick. I like that they can actually work the printer, because I would have been the idiot that went in and been like, hmm, you tried hitting start. Also, I really like the score at the end of this episode. I fanned all over scores a lot. So there's a shootout, the good guys win, the money, bad people don't. Yeah. So then finally Callan sits down with Agent Giordano and she asks him out, and he's like, no, I have this rule where I can't date cops. So she says, so you mean I have to wait until I retire? Or one of you guys could just not sign your contract. That seems to get the ball moving pretty quick. Callan is very Gibbs. And that makes sense, considering Gibbs is like his mentor. But he's very Gibbs. And you can see that with like the rules he set for himself. And I like it. He's kind of like an adopted son, almost, in my eyes. That's it. That's the first six <laughs> now episodes of NCIS LA. I am liking them. I'm getting more into them as they go on, which I kind of expected. <sighs> Does Geeks replace Dom? Is that a thing? Because that's the vibe I've been getting. Anyone wants to tell me, you're free to tell me. I just didn't want to look it up by myself and like ruin something. So, um, really like it. Also, 
I felt the need. I finally had to get this up because Daniela Rua is having a baby, and her and her fiance are so cute, and she's so cute, and just her son's gonna be so cute. You can't even all her children, no matter. I don't care if she has that one or ten thousand. They're all gonna be adorable, and I'm so happy for them, and I wish them nothing but the best. And congratulations, and I'm really happy. So I'll end it on that note. <laughs> oh, but can't end without talking about this. <laughs> this tab has been open for three days. I've just stared at it. Whew, okay. Probably, as you can tell, I probably won't have all the NCISLA reviews done before the premiere. I'll work something out. Don't you worry your pretty little mind about it. But, um, excited and scared about everything, so. <sighs> Good night and drive safely.